My name is Sebastian and I'm acting as product owner in our team. Um, I want to talk with you about a topic that's probably one of the first topics also for um, a lot of IoT project. And that's uh, how you can connect your device to the cloud. Screen share one second. There it is. Yeah, of course, uh, this is one of the first topics for the, the majority of IoT projects because what you always want to have is that your device is uh, connected to the cloud and um, that you can also send data to the, the cloud of your choice. Um, but there are uh, a lot of things that you have to care about in the beginning that you probably don't want to care about. How do I register to a specific cloud? Uh, how do I do this connection? How do I secure the connection also? And uh, that's a topic uh, Finetch IO also wants to uh, pick up because uh, redeveloping always this connection uh, shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be a thing in the future because uh, there are so many implementations already about that that uh, uh, who needs another implementation for that. First, um, to show a little where we are in this architecture here. Uh, so the first part we are talking about now is um, here in the bottom basically, so we're not talking about the left parts here. We are talking especially about the command line interface, which I'm going to show in a minute. And we are talking about the cloud connectivity to the clouds here, which is done by uh, via Mosquito. And Finnage is using uh, Mosquito MQTT bridges to uh, make this connection. And of course, uh, for the authentication, we are also talking about certificate management. So we decided that Finnage uh, connections uh, should always be based on certificates. And yeah, that's just the state of the art um, for, for IoT devices currently. Sorry, could you please quit um, Yeah, and uh, certificate management is, is not easy for a lot of people. Uh, I have to say, uh, I wasn't aware of certificates um a lot at the beginning too so what uh, type of certificate should i use how it is about uh, root certificates and device certificates and so on so finnage can take that over and i will also uh, show how the developer experience for that is um, in a second as andrea already mentioned so we are not targeting to only connect to one cloud or to two clouds but we want to be uh, fully open to two clouds so here we have some examples that we already have on our list, but of course we are absolutely open as an open source project to be uh, to have a lot of more clouds here on this list in the future. For the demo, I already prepared uh, two tenants. Um, today I'm going to show uh, at, at the first hand um, how to connect to Azure. I created a, a Azure IoT Hub tenant for that and to Cumulosity and also created a tenant here for that. So as we can see here, my Cumulosity tenant is completely empty here and also is the Azure tenant at the moment. We are going to start to connect um, to Azure first and I'm going to show for that the command line tool of Finnage. So first of all, I want to show how the command line tool in general looks. So we designed the command line tool really to make it easy for developer personas uh, to use it. So that for we have a try to make it easily understandable. And the second target was that it was also scriptable. But of course, if you are in a development phase, you want to do that manually. But later on, if you want to connect your devices to the cloud, you don't want to do that connect. Uh, connection to the cloud uh, manually and therefore it's also scriptable. Um, the first part of connecting to the cloud is always um, creating the device certificate because it's for all uh, clouds the common thing uh, to use a certificate for that. For this to do I also have to give a device ID so uh, with that it's made sure that I only have one device ID and that this is directly connected to the certificate that is created. So with this command, my device certificate is created. And if I'm interested where the certificate is lying, I can directly look into the configuration and there I see. Uh, because I didn't give any specific path I want to have, uh, it used the default ones. 
So I have my certificates for the device authorization now here in ETC Tech and have the key there, the private key and the certificate, uh, the actual certificate. And I also have my device ID here. Um, these paths can be changed. Um, so it's just uh, easier to use the default, but if you have uh, spe specific needs, requirements, thoughts, uh, you can change this path. What I'm now doing is also looking at the certificate itself. So for connecting to Azure, I always need this thumbprint here. And that's I'm, what I'm going to need in a second. But first I want to go to yeah, my IoT hub here and look for the host name. So I need to set the host name uh, on the Finetch side. So uh, Finetch knows to which IoT hub it has to connect to. And I'm doing that with the config here. And that's AZ URL. AZ is the short form of uh, Azure. And basically just copying that host name that I see here. Mm -hmm. And I have that. So now I want to go um, to devices. And with copying that um, thumbprint here that I saw, I can now create device here with my idea that I already gave before. It has to match for Azure. It's important here. And I can choose self-signed. So the device certificate I just created is a self-signed certificate. I said that's for development phase to make it really easy for developers to, to get their device online and get started because you usually don't want to care about connectivity that much. But if you are in a production phase um, setup, we, you really want to use uh, a real PKI and not self-signed certificates. That's also possible, of course, uh, but we will hear more about that uh, later in the session with Nexus. And I copy the thumbprint here, click on save. See again here that uh, yeah, my Azure URL was saved here. And what I do next is connect to Azure. So in this step, it's easy command, but there is a lot happening in the background. Um, it's giving printouts what is actually happening. So Finetch is now setting up uh, the Mosquito bridge to Azure. It's also restarting Mosquito, so the configuration is actually loaded. And it's also starting the mappers, so uh, about the data formats that are transcoded to the Azure format that is required. We will also hear more about that uh, later on. And yeah, it's also testing the connectivity. So it's sending a packet to Azure directly and it says, yes, connection check is successful. So my device should be connected to Azure now. Um, now I want to go on uh, with Cumulosity directly because uh, we also have the possibility to not only connect to one um, cloud at a time, we can connect to both uh, clouds um, at the same time. I want to show you again. So currently we only have this yeah, one other device here in my tenant. And we have under certificates currently no certificate. Um, historically using certificates is still a little bit new. So to all the use cases, uh, there are not that often based on certificates. And yeah, but this is really the way to go to. So what we want to do now is uh, as we did for Azure, we want to use that URL that we have in Cumulosity case here in the top and configure that also in the Finetch. And this is a C8Y URL, which is the short form for Cumulosity. Paste my URL here. Perfect. And I know I should also have that in the configuration. So now I have uh, the Azure URL here and uh, Cumulosity URL here. Um, some background, so for Cumulosity and for Azure, we are using uh, public valid uh, certificates. And this is um, here brought with the system, um, the Raspbian operating system. But if you have a specific cloud that uses um, not public known uh, certificates, you can also configure here. 
Um, the next step for Cumulosity in, in this part is a little different than to Azure. I have to upload my uh, device certificate to Cumulosity. That's a step uh, that is only required um, because I'm using a self-signed certificate. Uh, in a production use case, I wouldn't do that here from the command line. I would do it directly upload my root certificate here and use the root certificate for multiple devices, of course. Okay, my certificate is uploaded. And if I refresh here, there it is. And it's uh, directly enabled for auto registration also so that my device can connect in a second. And I can directly connect to Cumulosity too. So here's the same process that is happening again. The bridge is created, Mosquito is restarted. And afterwards, um, the connection is checked. This is always taking some seconds, but you can directly see if your device is working or not. OK, uh, this check was also successful. And I can see my device here. And I guess what we are all interested now, so that the connectivity is actually already there, so we don't see measurements at the moment. We don't see um, measurements in Azure at the moment, too. But if I want to send a measurement now, I only have to do that easily be to the local mosquito. So I don't have to care about my um, the connection to the cloud if I want to send measurements now or data now. I only have to send data from my application or command line or cron job or anything that can send to a local MQTT broker. So I only have to give the topic here. I don't have to give any IP because it's just uh, localhost is the default for Mosquito Pub. And give my example data here, which is just a temperature and send that. And Finage is now caring about uh, the transfer to the both clouds. Yeah, So uh, it's transferring to both clouds because it's connected to both of them. And if I refresh here, I also see measurements in Cumulosity directly and see my data point here with 22 degrees. If I go to Azure now, I have to open the Azure command line online to see that. Maybe a short refresh. OK, now we are a little larger than wanted, but OK. And I can listen to uh, messages coming in on my IT hub. Mm -hmm. And if I resend the message then, also showing up on Azure. And yeah, that's it for my part of the presentation. And with that, I give back to Phil.